everybody, Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We are going to be talking through tonight's NBA slate. And, uh, you know, I just want to touch on a couple quick things, like, about the NBA playoffs. Like, there are guys with unique lineups in the big buy-ins, especially the big buy-ins. The small buy-ins, you're going to end up chopping if you end up doing this. But people who are playing, you know, you're, you're, they're playing guys and nobody less than 35% owned, and, and you can win tournaments alone. Uh, I noticed that a couple times last night within a couple different tournaments. Really? And it's not uh, the way that I tend to want to play. So I, I tried to get a little, a little greedy um, and took some shots on like Thad Young, even though I saw the other guys that, you know, once I, once I heard he was in, I thought that maybe there was an upside for minutes because of the toughness. And I, I don't know, I, I ended up, uh, I probably could have gone with a Kleber uh, Finney Smith instead of a Thad Young and Bogdanovich and, and made myself a lot of money. Uh, at least it looked like that that way at one point. Um, just wanted to point that out. So you're going to have to eat a little more chalk, obviously, in basketball. But I, I do think we can find some creative plays. And I'll try to talk in terms of tournament specific sizes, because I do think that really matters. Like, in you know, the lottery, you can play this and what's it called? You can play in the, you know, maybe a 200 person tournament. You'd be more willing to just eat all chalk. Um, Sheets, any overall thoughts before we jump into it? Yeah, I didn't know that people were were, were, were taking it down with the uh, unique lineups last night. Um, uh, I mean, the big buy-ins, they almost always do. Uh, I was, I was, I was noticing Jalen Brunson who had like 400 fantasy points last night. Boy, oh boy, did he, did he, did he kill it last night? Yep. And I got the, I got that one right. I got that, those parts of my bets right yesterday. I just got, I got, I got the over under wrong in the in in that Dallas game, and I got the, uh, I think that was the only one I got wrong. But I got the other ones right. I had the Warriors to crush, and I had the, uh, may have gotten one other thing wrong. I can't remember what it was. Um, but I, I will be posting my bets later on today, guys. Um, let's talk about these game sheets. Let's jump into the first one, uh, Atlanta, Miami. It's a seven point spread. It's only 219, which I guess for a Miami game seems very high. And obviously for an Atlanta game seems very low. This is interesting. I, I, I have this feeling that Atlanta plays a tough game tonight. Uh, I think Miami is going to win this series pretty easily. This feels, I don't think that was the, the real Atlanta team that showed up the other day. They sort of had a, a bad schedule and they played, you know, almost like, I guess, 30 hours after their previous play-in game or 36 hours, whatever it was. And uh, they had a couple days now. I think this is an interesting spot for Atlanta. And I think this game might end up being a lot more competitive than the first one. That's my first thought. I'm going to uh, recommend, I'm going to recommend Atlanta plus the points here as well. Oh, I don't um, even know that I was going that far yet, but I love it, Cheats. Yeah, well, again, this is, goes back to the way I always used to think about basketball, and this is, you know, it goes back quite a long time. And while, you know, the NBA has changed and shot selection changed, all sorts, one thing that's never changed is is the DNA makeup of human beings. Okay, and 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 so these types of things I really do believe in, and I never really back tested this, but you know, it always seemed to make sense to me, and I always seem to make make money doing it. It's true, you so, know. So typically what, no, with this particular situation. So normally this is what happens in these series, especially in the NBA. Oh, well, obviously. Okay. So if, it, if a team goes up to zero and then they go back home to the other stadium, then it, you know, everybody realizes and knows that, that, that home team down 2-0, they're going to play extra hard. They're going to do whatever. And, and the spread's going to probably um, reflect that. And the team that's going on the road knows this as well, you know, but one kind of sneaky little psychological spot is is in these in these really just weird not weird just very just just innocent looking game twos okay because what happens is is the home favorite takes care of business in the first game okay and then all of a sudden there's this nice little letdown where they're like okay we're gonna we've taken care of business we are the better team we are at home and it's this game two that results in this letdown okay and uh again i haven't back tested it at all but it always makes sense to me so all else being equal i will always lean on that road underdog in game two following a game one you know handling so i uh, i do like atlanta plus or whatever it is but seven i you know presume that's what seven points whatever it is so i do like atlanta plus the seven I, I, hey, I, interesting. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about the, the plays here. Who, who are you liking? Because we saw, I mean, Trey Young is never going to have a game like that the other night and, and we're getting such an incredible discount on all these guys who are missing Capella. Um, I feel like we should, we should, I mean, 
I, I'm trying to figure out even where I want to go with all of it, but it, this feels like a spot, a spot where you could play a bunch of Atlanta guys. I don't want to yeah, look, I'm not trying to pick on Miami's defense. I mean, come on, of course I'm not going to, but I don't know, man. I, I feel like that everybody just feels so mispriced on the Atlanta side. So what are you doing with this one? Yeah. So uh, the problem with, with, okay. So I, I would love to play Trey Young. Okay. Problem is, is it's the playoffs, you know, and, and, when I say that, I mean, the playoffs are good for a play like Trey Young because they'll play him 57 minutes if they have to, right? Yeah. Um, however, playoffs are playoffs are nasty business, man. This is when teams just freaking scheme the hell out of you, you know? And and and, and they they could they could just decide to just take Trey Young out of the game. I, I'd be – or try to take Trey, Trey Young mm-hmm. out of the game. I, I'm, I'm more inclined – I mean, if you want to just try to – try something else, um, I, I'll, maybe I'll try like Bogdanovich or something like that. Um, he's not going to project really well. He's not projecting very well at all for me, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll on a three game slate. I'll play for a scheme situation where they just try to like make someone else beat them. And, and Bogdanovich seems like the kind of guy that can make that work. So, um, I'll take a shot with that from a projection perspective. I mean, you know, look, Atlanta looks pretty, pretty, pretty brutal because like they're playing Miami. They always are, are going to. DeAndre Hunter, again, he's never going to, you know, score you 40, but you know what? It's 4,400 on a three-game slate, so uh, I'd certainly consider him. And uh, that's where I'm at. I really didn't get to too much of the Atlantis. What, 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 other, what else in Atlanta are you interested in, if anything? Bogdanovich, I'm interested in John Collins, Akongwu, Gallinari, Kevin Herter, and DeAndre Hunter. <laughs> uh, they're all – Mispriced. I mean, look, so they they got Collins back. They're missing Capella. That means that a Kongwu's minutes should be very secure right. along with the John Collins. He or John Collins has to play the five then. I guess you could use Gallinari in a, in a funny situation, but Gallinari is right there. I, I'm having trouble ranking them right now. I have Bogdanovich as the best one, and I have Gallinari as the second best one because uh, I think they will play him minutes and put their best foot forward and Gallinari is, 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 if he plays the 30 minutes, I think that he's, he should be fairly, fairly safe. The uh, herder might be a further fetched one, but he, he definitely has upside. Um, don't look at any minutes from the last game. It was a blowout. It was a weird game. So just don't worry about the last game, but I, I, I like Trey uh, and Bogdanovich is my priority, but I, I do think I'm probably going to get like a little mini stack of Atlanta going tonight, just because we, you know, last night we would have killed for any of this potential value. And now we've got a bunch of it. They're all on one team, so it's a little tricky. But these guys got to play minutes and and just keep an eye out, like what they do, because there is always that weird, what if they decide to start Gorgie Jang kind of a thing and play a Kongu off the bench in his normal role? Just just keep an eye out for it. Um, I don't think they're going to, but it just throwing it out there. It could happen. Um, but yeah, I really like uh I, I, I really do like the Atlanta side of this thing. And, and I, and Deandre Hunter, who's going to look like the best play of all those guys, because the minutes are the most secure uh, is, is probably the one I'm most willing to fade. Although again, I think he's a strong play too. They just have a bunch of guys in the four K's and I don't expect these minutes to, to translate, but the problem is you got to get the guys right. So Bogdanovich at 28 minutes, I think you should get, I think that should be boosted up to a rat to over 30. I know people will say what he played during the regular season. I don't think that matters. I think this is the postseason you play with your best guys the most for the most part. John Collins is coming back from the injury, so we'll see what the minutes restriction is on him. Um, obviously, some some that these guys can't all play together, but I just feel like some of them. The Bogdanovich might play thirty four minutes. He's projected at twenty eight. Herder might play thirty four minutes. He's projected at twenty nine. Gallinari might play twenty six minutes. He's projected at thirty one. Um, a Kong was projected at 27. He could play 20 and he could play 35 and neither would surprise me. And John Collins could play 24 or he could play 32. I, I just don't know what's going to happen with the limits on him. So I, I just think it's one we're going to have to probably wait a little till closer to lock. We will touch on it at six Eastern on the live show. Um, but I think that's something we have to look out for going forward. And then you get again, great pricing on all of the Miami guys. So what are you doing on the Miami side? Yeah. Um, problem with Bam is that I want to play Cat. Um, so, yes, I could play them both. Um, but that, that's my problem with Bam. Problem with Butler is he never scores any fantasy points. Um, Lowry, maybe. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not – am I missing something? I, I'm not 
getting too much of Miami. What, what, who, do, who do we like here? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what you mean about the Butler thing, but I think Butler's a great play. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I like, I like Bam. I, I do like Bam the best. Uh, Bam then Butler. Butler would be my order. Uh, and then I like Lowry, then Hero. Uh, all of these guys have massive ceilings against this Atlanta defense. And one of these other nothings, I don't want to say nothings, but one of these other role guys is going to get going to get hot. I mean, I don't know if Duncan Robinson is going to go and shoot, make at eight, you know, shoot 89%, make eight out of nine threes again. But I expect that I'm come to expect that from, from Miami, especially when they're playing teams that are poor defensively, because they're very unselfish. They have a lot of guys who can draw double teams. Um, whether it's hero breaking down somebody off the dribble and somebody help, rotating over, whether it's Butler in the post, whether it's Bam down low, and it just leads to wide open shots. But I think Max Struss might be the the the, the favorite of the, of the weird long shot plays. But I I don't think you need any of them to be honest with you because you've got that other pricing and on some of the Atlanta guys who are we know they're going to play the minutes. But I I just am, I've come to expect one of these guys to get hot every game. It just seems to happen. But uh, I think they're all in play. I have it. I have it ranked Bam, Butler, Lowry at the moment. Well, um, I mean, not not to turn this into a whole whole thing here, but I I I, I really didn't think I was being facetious. I, I I I didn't think that Butler was even in play anymore in DFS. I mean, I, I'm I'm uh, he, he, I guess maybe because the playoffs, you were expecting more of him. But he hasn't had a game that I'll take in like forever. No, he just put up fifty. The two two games ago, he put three up games four. ago against Charlotte when he had scored 144 points. I mean, yeah, but that was yeah. a that was a. I mean, and then we have the Atlanta blowout where he would have he probably would have put up 50 plus in the last game, but they were up by a million, so he didn't play. Right. Fair enough. Um, if you expect Atlanta to stay close, I certainly would would get some shares of Butler. Um, mm-hmm. But again, I, I do prefer Bam a little bit, and I think you could make an argument for Lowry, and and I, I really wouldn't look at those later season games. That's really really okay. I just think it's really not responsible of us because those games meant nothing to them for the most part. They had the, they had the, first, the one seed basically clinched for a while um, for, I think like not clinched, but they were in the, they were two games up or more over the last like seven, six games in the season. So six, seven games. So there's not like a desperate mode for Butler to go nuts in any of those situations. Um, but I, again, we're going to have to rate them against these other guys. Right. And this is a one of a spread that I, Look, I, I said I thought that Memphis would win this series, and I thought that it would be a very tough series for them. This is a really, really weird matchup. For whatever reason, they have a really hard time with Minnesota and especially with Anthony Edwards. It's kind of strange to see Memphis as a seven-point favorite. <laughs> just It just sort of shocked me a little bit because they got outplayed pretty badly in the first game, to be honest with you. And Ja playing great down the stretch get, kept them in the game. But, like, I don't know, man. I, I, I This – it's it's I want Memphis to win the series and I'm you know it's kind of weird though to see a seven point spread anyway very high total too uh so what are you doing what are you going to do with this with this game because I feel like there's again everybody feels too low price it's a little different than how I felt yesterday all the studs in general are definitely priced down so that we can try and play more of them they do that in the playoffs a lot but who are we going with here because I I could make a good argument for a bunch of guys but I don't really see them one as standing out as much better than the others with the exception of maybe jaw or maybe towns. But I, I don't feel, I don't have a really, really strong take on it. How about you? I currently like cat. I mean, he's, he's currently my favorite. Um, and then, I mean, I like, I kind of like the Memphis role players a little bit. I, mean, I kind of like uh, Brandon Clark. Yep. Desmond Bain, uh, Dylan Brooks. I kind of, I kind of like those guys a little bit, uh, but you know what you're right about. I mean, like the pricing across the whole slate is very soft. I mean, like you could play, you can play a lot of guys. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't know. And it goes back to the thing you, you teach me all the time. Like, you know, what, what are, if we're playing value, what are, what are we playing it for? You know? Um, mm-hmm. But I think that cat is the best play on the slate. Um, so I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna try to play that. And look, he's gonna be owned, obviously. Um, but maybe I'll get uh, different somewhere else. If, hey, if people if people are afraid of uh, of a foul prone J- Jaron Jackson, maybe I'll try some of that. You know, that could be something different. Um, or maybe that's not even very different. Or maybe something like um, Stephen Adams. Maybe maybe he's not gonna be that highly owned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I'm, uh, I do like Cat and. And as you kind of also taught me, like the whole season, I mean, Anthony Edwards is in play every game. 
Um, so uh, I will, I will, I will consider that also. Yeah, uh, I do think that on the slate, you, you kind of want to try and take one of the three from Minnesota and Edwards. I mean, Ed, Edwards just destroyed. I think the average is like 55 or 60 against this team this season. Um, is that right? Something crazy like that. He put up over 60, I think, twice, and then he put up 54 in the first playoff game. Um, he's he's coming into his own. There's a lot of people who are really high in the basketball circles who are like, this is the leap we're talking about. This guy's going to be a top 15 player in a year or two, if not next year. Um, and so I'm so, so it's sort of making me struggle a little bit with it, but I, I do really like, uh, I think that I'm, I would go Edwards towns, Russell, but Russell at no ownership at 7,100 is kind of interesting to me. Shot the ball two of 11, still put up 30 fantasy points in the last game. And they really didn't need him. They were playing better without him on the court. Um, uh, so that's interesting. Uh, I think the, the, the McDaniels Vanderbilt thing, Jaden McDaniels had some big games against the team. He put up 34 in the first game. He's 4K. Um, and I really like the Triple J idea. I think that's one that I think is, is worth taking a shot on because how long do they try to keep Steven Adams trying to go out on Cat? It's just Steven Adams is a great post defender, but Cat's going to try and, you know, beat you with – he's one of the he's, – he's the best uh, three-point shooting big man of all time, not named Dirk Nowitzki. And – uh, it just doesn't make sense to have Adams matched up with him the whole time at the other, on the flip side, Jaron Jackson jr. Is going to get himself into trouble almost all the time in a matchup like that uh, because of the size down low, but Jaron Jackson jr. Is also one of the best defenders in the NBA. So I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's sort of, sort of all over the place on this one. Uh, Dylan Brooks on, on FanDuel stands out a little more to me at 5,300. Uh, I, I, I am really struggling with this and you want a ton of exposure because this is the game that, that should be high and tight, high and tight ish. Uh, John ja Morant, I think is probably the priority on the Memphis. Side. I think John ja Morant, I would take over cat today. Um, and then I would probably look down to Brandon Clark, who I think, well, here's what I'm worried about with Brandon Clark. One, I think he's going to be popular Two a lot of his results come as a, as like, I, I wouldn't try to play Brandon Clark with Jaron Jackson too much just because he's going to get the, 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 the run that Jaron Jackson doesn't get. Now they also like Brandon Clark to guard. They, they had Brandon Clark and, and Brooks splitting minutes on, on Edwards. Um, so I just, I just feel like there's, there's room on and Brandon Clark's minutes to both be way less than 24 and be way higher than 24, just depending on how the game goes. And I just don't buy that Memphis is going to keep playing a million guys every night. You've got to tighten up your rotations a little bit in the postseason. They're down so, one nothing. Yeah, they're down one nothing. This is the must win. So, and those must win or not must win, but yeah, I guess it kind of is. I mean, they're playing. Of course. Players. I mean, like you're down one nothing. I mean, you got to win. Yeah, I think. And um, uh, yeah, so that's right now. I had so right now Clark, Jaw, and Triple J are the guys I'm most interested in from Memphis. And on Minnesota, it's the big one of the big three paired probably with uh, McDaniels, but I don't mind if you want to take a shot on Vanderbilt, who way underperformed in, in the first game. Um, it's interesting that McDan Jared Vanderbilt is projecting so much better that early projections have him so much higher owned. But the truth is, they, they uh, uh, McDaniels played the more minutes. McDaniels was put up thirty four fantasy points. Uh, Vanderbilt put up ten, and you have Vanderbilt. Right now, I'm looking at 30% Vanderbilt, 2% McDaniels. <laughs> but I think that'll change as we get closer to lock, obviously. All right, Memphis uh, on the Memphis side. Uh, I'm sorry, on the, uh, and then is there anybody else I missed sheets before we go on to the next one? No, we're ready. All right, New Orleans, uh, Phoenix. All right, on the New Orleans side, uh, again, everybody looks so cheap. It just looks so tempting to want to play all of them. I would say that I think that there is a path for Joe Val to have just an, I mean, Joe Val had 25 rebounds in the first game. He was seven for 21 from the floor. I think if I had to do something, I'd be willing to go back to that guy the most. Um, so I have Joe Val as, as my favorite, but I don't mind if you want to go to Ingram or McCollum, they're both very strong plays. They're going to play a million minutes. Joe Val won't. Um, uh, so I have those guys in like a similar thing, uh, Joe Val Ingram or McCollum, but I have it in that order. Uh, sorry, no, Joe, I have Joe Val McCollum, then Ingram. That's, that's my order um, of those big three. And I'm not going to get invested in anyone else except for maybe Herb Jones. 
on the New Orleans side and on the Phoenix side. I am tempted to sort of stay away-ish with the exception of maybe Chris Paul and Mikhail Bridges. How about you? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm taking the opposite approach. Uh, I uh, Same thing. I mean, Phoenix uh, up one nothing. Um, I, I think New Orleans is live. And New Orleans being live, I know where the shots are going to be taken from. So I'm going to play both of these guys, I think. I'm going to play both Ingram and McCollum. Um, and I'm going to play uh, uh, at least Paul, maybe Paul and Booker. I don't know. Uh, I think this is – Oh, you the, want to stack this game. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I think I'm going to do um, is, is, uh, is, is go with that. Um, Valanciunas, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I hear you. It's, it's one of those weird things where he just never does it for me for some reason. Um, but if I'm going to really go after this game, I probably should run some lineups with him um, and not play both McCollum and, and Ingram, for example. Um, and I think Aiton's probably in play on the other side too. I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a good game. And I think I'm going to go to where the production, production uh, lies. Uh, I don't think I want to get any uh, – anything other than the top scorers, the top producers from both these teams. And uh, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I really, uh, I, I really think this is an interesting slate because I feel like there's a lot of different ways to build and it's uh, you know, I have my priority guys here, but I feel very all over the place with them because two of the guys I've got as priorities in Brandon Clark and Mikhail Bridges I feel like I could very easily make a case against them uh, bridges because of lack of fantasy production, although he's awesome in real life. And yeah. I can make a case against uh, uh, Brandon Clark because I am not a hundred percent certain on the minutes with him. And I, I feel like we're giving him maybe a little bit too many, too much per minute. Anyway, uh, the guys, I do want one of McCollum, but Joe Valor Ingram. And I do want one of the big three from, from, Memphis, but with the value, you can kind of squeeze in some other mid-tier plays with some of those 4K guys. And uh, I love the idea of the long shot Triple J. I can't get away from that thought. I just feel like that this could be like a, a 40 to 50 fantasy point game for him at no at no. I like that. I like that a lot. I think it's a really, really, really good play to get different. And I love Bogdanovich, uh, especially especially if you're not going to play Trey. Uh, you can go with the bog. You could play three of these other Atlanta guys because that production will have to come from somewhere. And they're going to score a hundred ish points. So if you play Bogdanovich, maybe Gallinari and either Hunter or Herder or Collins or a Kongwu, one of those other guys. Right. To, and with the Bogdanovich, you know, I think that's an interesting way to go in the fade tray. We're going to trap tray thing. And that's what almost worked for me when I had a shot on the uh, showdown or the, the, the two game slate with Cleveland is until, until Trey started getting going finally, but like they were, they were doing that high trap with Trey. And it, if they're going to do that, the other somebody else is going to have to beat you, and Bogdanovich is the next guy who's going to have the ball in his hands the most. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. But we will yeah. talk more as it gets closer to lock. And there yeah. are a few tags on the slate, and most of the I assume those are not real, but in the playoffs. But every now and then we've seen them. Do, be you, do you do you want to do um, six thirty, um, or would you rather still do six? I don't want to cross over. I don't want to be building my baseball things at okay. the very very last second, if possible. Okay. All right. Sounds um, good. So, we'll, so six o'clock it is. Yeah. All right. Sounds great. All right. Good luck to everybody tonight and we'll see you at six Eastern. All right. See you then.